Hi, this is Michael King. This is Debt Capital Markets, Part 4, where we talk about ratings. Let's talk about the risks in corporate bonds. Obviously, we've talked about the risk of interest rates changing, which would cause the yield to either go up or go down, leading to the price to go down or go up. Another risk is that the borrower is not able to make their payments and they default. This is known as credit risk. A bond can be denominated in different currencies, which would introduce currency risk. If you buy a bond in the U.S. and you're a Canadian, you're exposed to movements in the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar. There's also a, a problem of liquidity risk. Bonds tend to trade in large blocks and they may not be available. There may not be anyone who's willing to trade in the size or at the speed at which you would like to trade. For some bonds with embedded options or with sinking fund, there's also a risk of prepayment where the money is coming back to you at a different time than when you expected when you priced the bond. Credit risk is when a company cannot make its payments. It does not simply have the cash flow to either pay the interest expense or to pay the principal at maturity. Missing an interest payment is an event of default. It doesn't cause bankruptcy because it's at the option of the creditor to negotiate new terms or to permit the borrower to make a late payment. There are two different types of bankruptcy in the United States. There is a reorganization, which is called a Chapter 11, and there is a liquidation, which is a Chapter 7. In a reorganization, the company comes up with a plan that it presents to creditors on how it's going to move forward and restructure its debts. In a liquidation, the company is sold all of its assets by the, by the bankruptcy court. There are special organizations whose job it is to evaluate credit risk. These are called credit rating agencies, and they're private companies with names like Moody's, S&P, and Fitch. These companies will look at every fixed income instrument and assign a rating to see what the risk is that the company is going to default. They use different scales, but they all have the same meaning. They're basically looking at the ability and the willingness of the company to make payments when due. Here you can see a comparison of ratings for Moody's, S&P, and Fitch. They all start with AAA and they end with D for default. That there are a category of ratings called investment grade, which is above the solid blue line, and non-investment grade below. As you go from the highest rating and decline, your rating is becoming more speculative. You can see that the risk of default is very low for those investment grade ratings, but it increases steadily, particularly when you get to triple B. Once you cross over into double B and below, you are into what is called junk bonds or high yield securities, a much more favorable term that was developed in the 1980s. Many issuers will pay a much higher credit spread if their credit rating falls below investment grade. Some investors are not able to buy bonds that have non-investment grade ratings. How do the credit rating agencies determine ratings? They look at ratios such as the ability to make interest payments, using the EBIT interest coverage ratio. They look at how much debt the company is using in its capital structure, using total debt to capitalization or total debt relative to the cash flow available, which is EBITDA. Notice that the rating agencies will always use book values. They do not use market values. They view the historical value of the debt as more important than the market value of the debt. They also use financial statements and will make changes to those financial statements when calculating these ratios. Let's take a look at simply EBIT interest coverage. As you go from a AAA to a C, you can see that the ratio is going down. What this means is that the company is having less and less earnings before interest and taxes that is available to make interest expense payments. If we look at total debt to capital, where capital is debt plus equity at book value, you see that a AAA company usually has around 12% debt to total capital, whereas a double B company might be more like 54%, a single B would be at 76%. If you were to look at the spread over a risk-free rate that is paid by bonds with different credit ratings, you would see a relationship that looked like this. The spread in basis points is lowest for AAA rated bonds and highest for B rated bonds. Spreads will change every day based on predictions about what is happening with the business cycle and the outlook for a company. A credit spread, when added to the risk-free rate, gives you the yield to maturity on the bond. 